let's look at this inverse limit example here. So this is an example of limit so that taking this G to be this particular category whose objects form a set we see that this is a small category and morphism by for any given IG because the objects form a set which is a directed set which means this is a pre order on it so there is a relation to IG for any I bigger equal than J which means define this R to be bigger or equal symbol then for any I have relation with J the morphism is defined to be or say there is a morphism between I and J from I to J the action is same as bigger equal but then our diagram is defined to be a factor from a covariant factor from G up to C the same as saying a contravariant factor from J to C and so this will tell that we have uh, FG to FI and so a cone would be object of C with maps such that diagram please it's actually very confusing very difficult to, to remember here okay this direction is the same as bigger equal and then you reverse it they take the opposite of j then this become the same direction as less equal but i'm feeling that this is totally artificial mm, not at all uh, useful because what was in my mind was just take the example of zp as inverse limit of the quotient p to the power n and we know that the morphism uh, modulo p to the power n Okay, and this is also modulo map. Those are the other cx, ci, cg, and it's commutes. So, does it make any sense to say, let's say, what is our directed set j at the beginning? So, I see integers, for example, with bigger equal or less equal. You could define whatever you want, right? I mean, you could say one is bigger or equal than two if one is smaller as as an integer than two, or make it more abstract i is bigger equal than j if i is smaller as an integer to j o although this is opposing opposite to our intuition but it makes sense this is this is the uh, directed set but okay you have to also check is this really directed set because the directed set also required so let's look at the definition of directed set set requires firstly transitive reflexive this is just saying that I have relation with I and I have relation with J J has relation with K implies I have relation with K finally one more condition 
for any ij there exists a k such that i has relation with k j has relation with k and we'll call this r less equal because this intuitively corresponds to our intuition that if you're looking at i feel this is because this coincides with intuition on integers if we really define it in the way higher is equal to g if i is less or equal to j because this is just a symbol okay? less equal than g as integer as number then obviously i is always less equal than i if i is less equal than j j is less equal than k then i is less equal than k and thirdly for any two integer i j uh, there exists an integer k such that i j both less equal than k right but what i want to say is that well, even if I define it opposite to the intuition, it still works. I mean, I is uh, this means I is bigger equal than I. Okay, if I is bigger equal than J, J is bigger equal than K, then I is bigger equal than K. No problem. And if for any two I and J, there exists K such that i is bigger or equal than k and j is bigger or equal than k this is still true right you just take the minimum of the two integer and the, that one satisfies it. i mean it still works actually it's this one that really corresponds to our example here why because because reasonably you could imagine this factor f from i up, sorry, from g up. From g up to, I would say to, mm, category is more do if you want, okay? And then I'm going to map i to z portion p to the power i. It makes sense, right? If I'm using this i bigger or equal than j, if i is smaller as integer, smaller, I would not say smaller or smaller or equal, less or equal, then recall, recall the, the example we are taking here. So at the beginning, the direction is the same as bigger or equal. Which means, which means at the beginning in the category J, uh, because one is bigger or equal than two, so the direction is from one to two. I'm saying this because, as I said, this is opposite to our intuition, and similarly to bigger equal than three so the direction is like this and so when you apply your functor f you change the direction because it's contra iron functor from j to c or co iron functor from j up to c so you got f2 to f1 f3 to f2 right and that's exactly how we have because if you do this then this is your fn plus one and this is your fn indeed your morphism is from plus one to n it is now corresponding to the bigger equal in the common sense it's not 
crest bump to one bigger record than two. And we have this. And it's opposite to the intuition of two is bigger equal than one because this will imply finally you have have this. But okay, what I'm talking about is totally nonsense. It's tautology. I'm just saying that this part of convention here is really artificial. It doesn't really matter. What we really care about is just the final diagram in my opinion okay so let's continue with this uh, already described category J let me use it to define this functor F and gives us cone define what is cone and use this cone to define what is universe limit if the object satisfies universal property okay which means so we count this and if for any other object having having a similar uh, community diagram then there exists a unimorphism then this line is called the limit it's the universal property used to define this product to, uh, uh, product limit or say universal limit and the example is also given that is the real integer zp okay uh, let me say something more on this this kind of way J we used to be our indexing category uh, if I'm not wrong this is also you could call it a filter category what is filter category let's check a filter category is category firstly now empty Which is our case because we require direct descent to be non empty descent. Secondly, for any two objects, there is this object K such that both of them map to K. This is also the case in our category J because for any two objects I J, there exists a K such that I is less equal than K and J is less equal than K. And this imply that there is a map from k to i there is a map from k to j because at the beginning we are keeping the same direction as the bigger from start from the bigger one map is smaller one but then if you apply our f i mean or in this is in j if you look at g op this will tell you exactly There exists a K and exists morphism was mapped to it. Right, because here his J. His J is what our J up. And lastly, every two par two parallel there is this object K such as that. And an arrow such as that. Composed with this one gave is the same I think this is just saying that if you have is this more generalization or restitution because in our case uh, for each i and j we only have one arrow I, I would probably guess this is something more general than ours because in our case we don't have parallel arrows actually we only have one arrow each other okay so maybe this is indeed more general than our situation 
so one more thing to say there is a different point of view to look at in your system okay so in your system I didn't really say what it's called in your system in your limit is our inverse limit just define just define what is called inverse limit of category sorry what we define is the inverse limit of a category but you could define a different point of view actually as inverse limit of factor what is your system your system is just a cone in our own terminology Your systems add your name is a category C and means an alternative description in terms of functors. Any partially ordered set I can be considered as a small category where the morphism consists of arrows I to J if and only. If I is less equal than J. You see this description still from the KPI, you can change the direction. It really doesn't make sense uh, to fix I less equal than J implies I to J or J to I. You can just choose whatever you want. This doesn't matter. An inverse system is then just a contrivariate functor from I to C, or C a covariant functor from I up to C. So your inverse system is exactly our diagram. covariant factor from I up to C or a contravariant factor from I to C. It's the same. This is called your system. So sorry, we should not say this is a cone. It's a diagram actually. Diagram before. And you know C I up to be the category of these functors, which means those diagrams. And then plus it forms category plus natural transformations. Transformations of F of diagram. I'm just saying of F as a functor. Okay. And then you can describe inverse limit as right adjoint of what is called a trivial functor. What is a trivial functor? A trivial functor here is. map from C to C I R. So give me a arbitrary object of C. I'm going to define you a diagram. Because this diagram is the trivial one. Let me let me denote by Fn. Let me describe what it is Fn. This Fn is is going to map okay a map from I P to C but it's going to map any I map it to n okay for the convenience of the reader so let's really go back to see what is the definition of diagram once you have forgot a diagram it's f Sort of as indexing collection of objects or morphisms in C pad and in J. A diagram of shape J is a factor. That's all what it is. And what is a cone? A 
cool corresponding to this diagram is an object together with Murphy. Okay, so more or less this is saying that this part of the definition, this part of information is the diagram at a cone with this part. Of course, making diagram commutes. So here, this is math, which means for whatever i j, if my direction is correct, or it doesn't matter. This is always the same identity map on n because every object is mapped to n. And in this case, it is said that an object of C can be considered as a trivial inverse system where all objects are equal to x and all arrows are the identity of x. Okay. And so we have a map from C to C I up. And now for this functor we call it trivial functor. This trivial functor we can use it to describe what is inverse limit. Inverse limit would define as right of the joint of this trivial functor. Let's say why is the case. Let's check that. If we use this equality to define this thing this thing becomes exactly the inverse limit or you see use your knowledge what is your inverse limit put it here it indeed gives you this bijection of this identity let's check this is the case so what is the homomorphism in the category of ci op from your fn it's a trivial object it's a tri major trivial functor on any object let's say n of c map to arbitrary diagram f so this is the category whose morphisms are natural transformations right so let's look at here suppose you have a morphism from f into f so that it has a natural transformation this by definition natural transformation means for any object x and y in i up Okay, or it's the same as say y to x in I up. Applying it to your functor f and f, you have to create a diagram here, right? But your i is identity or is, is a trivial diagram, it maps everything to n, which means it's the same as it's the same as saying that. right but but what is this this is just telling you that n kind of satisfying the creative diagram condition if there exists the inverse limit corresponding to this diagram f. Actually, you see for each diagram it corresponds to inverse limit defined using di the diagram. I could even denote by inverse limit to f, although it's object of C. And start with any morphism here. What it gives me is exactly a thing like this. But once you got this, by the inverse property of inverse limit, you got this, which means there is one one correspondence between a morphism of this and a morphism of this, which is a morphism from n to inverse limit. I'll give you a bijection. Okay, finally, let's look at more precisely on this example, product co-product. Let's just look at this product, maybe. 
so what I want to say that we start with limit and then you have many examples of limit among them you have product equalizer inverse limit etc but then each of them also have an example for example product here you have also Cartesian product of sets and also Cartesian product of topological space of course you have to precise what are topology there direct product of groups Product with Z module. Sorry, not, not necessarily a building here. So just groups. There is again examples of limit finally. Although it is an example product, but then it's finally a product of limit. Similarly, for co limit. equalizer uh, push forward co-product and for co-product there are also something very commonly you know a disjoint union of sets free product of groups product of commutative algebra which aren't equivalent to the category well fine scheme and I mean K algebra corresponds to the fine scheme over K and then the tensor product here corresponds to the product here because there is anti relation destroy the union to close space Okay. This should also be. They should also have the example of direct sum. Direct sum. any groups there are some of any groups are co-limits there are some of the modules and here we have the product of groups Discarding the product for the multi free abiding groups. Okay, for abiding groups, you still have Cartesian product. I will write it like this Cartesian product. Direct product of groups, Cartesian product of groups. Are you this is abiding groups or not? And here, hmm, free product of groups. And direct sum of groups. Or sum of even groups to use. Or free product of groups. The examples of co limits. 